I'm not even in full workies tonight because tonight. Don't form the dish then for <laughs> sake. Because tonight it is summarising up time. This is this is my last night. Well, not my last night, but the la the last of the work in this unit's done. Look, there is all this empty space where it was once a low cost. The TVR runs. The list is well, the list not quite complete. Getting ready to move out. At least that was the case until the kind of loader turned up, who's now holding the camera, and gave me that look. Yeah. The BM, as we ascertained, was amazing standard and I should have left it that way and we've kind of missed a period of time where it's been mapped and I've f***ed about with it and ruined it um, and then I decided I needed another car um, so I did go and buy an MX-5 mm. it's great mm -hmm. really really happy shall we have a look at it in the pitch yep. dark because that is f***ing pitch dark still it is, it's, it's dark, yep stop, talk me through this epic purchase yep. let's uh... <laughs> Let's just bring it in, we'll talk about it in here. Cool. I'll move let's this out, we can temporarily put it in here so we yeah. can see what we're talking about. Yes, yes, let's, yes, do, that. let's do that. Yeah. Well then. Hold, please! <laughs> talk amongst yourselves. Do you like it's not a dignified exit. No, it never is, really. And that's with the roof down. Like, you don't want to see me trying to put the roof up. This is not the fucking worst thing I've seen you buy, David. It's not, is it? It's, it's got leather seats, man. It's from a man who has a silver two-seater convertible. Not a bad colour. Um, it's got the six-speed manual, because if it didn't, I'd shoot you. On my second fast automatic car now. Ah, yeah, it's... Uh... And I love it for driving about. I'll never, I'll never take it away from you, but this is a no. No, no, but that, you know, just even in fast cars now, yeah. I'm losing my love for it a wee bit. It does, it does take a bit of involvement out of it. It takes a lot of involvement out of it, and that, that's really the, the principal challenge. So it's the 2 litre, 16 mm. valve, 6 speed, limited slip diff. Mm. It even has a Bose sound system and the 17 inch it's, 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 it's an yeah. MX5 NC Sport. I see it's got this though. I mean, on the subject of like... It's gear conditioning, eh? I, well or not, it works. <laughs> I mean, why would you ever need it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Surely it defeats the point of the car. So what I'm thinking here is, I can see lots of room for it. Lots of fucking grime, mate. Whoa. That's... Is that underseal? Is that underseal? This? I have no idea what the fuck that is. That is underseal, actually, yeah. Um, well, yeah, it's not an engine I'm familiar with. I mean, there's room here for things. Oh, but yeah. the thing that goes on this side is not the same as the thing in an NB. Mm. Because one might observe this is actually not the exhaust manifold. Oh f yeah, so that, that is in fact the inlet manifold. Oh, the boo. exhaust goes at that side, so it is slightly more complicated, of course. Uh, I see the right height is obnoxiously tall. It's so. dreadful, yeah, the right height's dreadful. But I'm not offended by the wheels though. The wheels, the wheels are, are nice, they're the wheels optional okay. 17s, yeah, they're nice. Well, it's, it's mostly alright. Ah. So... Expand yourself. You know how when a petrol engine sounds a little bit like a diesel engine? Oh for f sake. Yeah. Right. So, I got it. Check. Wait, we did just drive this in and it didn't make a f***ing peep. Aye, it's, it's, it's not bad, like it's not far gone. Listen when it starts. All right. Obviously it doesn't do it. Very, very gently bring it up and down. Yeah, a very, very faint amount of it. And and you know, hot, I was going to say, you are f***ing lucky boy because if that's not making any noise when the oil's cold, there's a pretty good chance we can save this. Hoping, hoping. Right. So, you are the expert of these things. Right, okay. If one man can do it, so can another. So I have elected that this time I would not throw the towel in and go in a huff and try and sell the car. I'm going to fix it. Well, that's good. Well, we're going to fix it. We are going to fix it. So what are we going to do? Okay, well, in the first instance, I think what we need to do is start some basic diagnosis. Now, as you can hear, it does sound a wee bit knocky. We want to make sure that we're definitely hunting the right fault, which is going to be, again, failure. We are going to compression test the MX-5 engine. We obviously know there's a problem with knocking, um, very likely the big end shells, but we also have identified that it's burning oil. Don't quite know why, but there's oil going to miss. So we're going to do a compression test and we're looking for, uh, from what I've seen in eBay adverts, 220 PSI is a really healthy engine across all four. Um, let's see what we get.
there we go. So it's about 190 PSI we reckon and it's the same on all four. We're getting a consistent between 190 to 200. Now, a point to note, uh, and I think we covered this briefly when we did the focus. When you are doing a compression test with this and your throttle is closed, you are going to get slightly lower compression than you would if the throttle was open. This is fly by wire. We're trying to do a quick diagnosis in this without getting bogged down in a lot of technicalities. So we're just looking for consistency here rather than exactly 220. If the throttle's going to throttle us back and give us a little reading, it doesn't matter. I just want to make sure all four cylinders are reading the same. And they are. <laughs> if you look at this one, it is slightly different to the other three. And now, why is that? Well, I, I've been looking at it and I've, a, I've been having a think, but really I think the big problem here is we've got a leak above the spark plug. Yeah, rocker black. cover. Yeah, more like rocker cover, because you can see there, that's... Not really hugely surprising for an engine that's done 95,000 miles, to be fair. So. That, this is valid, so I'm not going to get too hung on it. Um, Carbonisation is consistent across all four. Um, slightly darker on three than one, but uh, we could allow it. Um, but realistically, yeah, just a wee... I mean, there's, there's nothing wild. What's important is that unlike the Focus, there's no oil on any of the spark plug tips. So if you ever find oil here, that's a problem, a big one, because it means oil is getting in somehow and that's, yeah, panic. Crucially though, what we have discovered so far is that everything that's in this engine is doing what it should do. Um, so we'll need to dig a bit deeper to see where this rattle is and figure out where the oil's going. I've got a feeling this is going to take slightly longer than the compression test. This might be 30 seconds of montage and not 20. Find me the jack! Under trays off. I'm comfortable. I look comfortable. I look like a very fat. Well, me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I this see is, there's also uh, a level of um, car line next to you as well. Yes, so um, this is off. This is probably as bad as any bit of the car is or is going to get. And it came off relatively easily, so that is somewhat encouraging. Okay. Why this is, is not a flattering angle. No, it really isn't. No. <laughs> Shall we get you out of there? Compression test done, we're happy with that. The next thing really is to drop the oil. So Mr. Thomas tells me and check and see what state it's in. Has it got metal floating in it? Um, and try and understand just how catastrophic the failure is because we're a bit miffed so far. We sort of expected a loss of compression, so it's possible I've misread the oil level when I've checked it at home before bringing it here. Um, and it's not actually burning oil at all because there's no leak. And if the cylinders are making compression, it's clearly not burning oil. So let's stop the oil and see if that tells a story. I bought a see-through container. So this is a seven litre food container, but principally uh, it's obviously watertight and it's see-through. So we're gonna drop the oil into it and go fishing and see if we can find particulate metal. So the, the genius with this is that the see-through means that whatever settles to the bottom, we won't have to It's going to allow us to see in the, any sediments that sit in the bottom, principally metals, and it means we don't need to go fishing quite so hard to see if anything's failed or not. So let's get the oil into this and uh, figure out what's happened. Wow, that was easy. Right. If nothing comes out, it's because there's a shell block in the roof. <laughs> <laughs> it's black. It's very black. Isn't it? What is our verdict? Do you want some more food? We have some amount of particulates that form on the top. see all of that floating mm -hmm. garbage as part of shell. We've drained the oil. We can see there is crap in it, which is what we expected. We ran a compression test. It was positive, which is not what we expected. So it seems apparent that the issue is big end bearing failure. The problem is the amount of oil we've taken out of this car is about, well, it's a seven litre container that's half full. So it's taken out like three and a half litres. There's probably another half a litre in the oil filter and then the galleries around the engine and whatnot have some oil in it. But I added a litre and a half to that when I noticed there was something not quite right, i.e. the engine was knocking its pan in, which means it's been running low in oil when I got it. 
Obviously I checked it when I picked it up, it was at the low mark, but it's nothing to be particularly concerned about. We don't have a leak. We don't have a leak. We don't have a burn. There's no burn on it. Where the hell is it going? Yeah. Um, so that's that's debatable. What is not debatable is the fact that we have dead bearings. Yeah. So we're now at a, a crossroads. We have one of two options. We either try changing the bearings, um, which is a little bit minge baggy. What we didn't expect was the level of effort involved. The problem is that the sump is covered by the subframe, both parts of it. So there's a kind of rear brace and then the front subframe. Both of them cover the sump. So we might be able to get it off just removing the rear, but it's going to be a lot of effort and a lot of hours. Um, so the question is, do we just forget it and go straight to, do we buy an engine? My gut tells me we are not getting shells in this without the engine coming out of the car. I agree. And if I take the engine out of the car, What's the point of putting it back in? With shells to roll a dice. Really, the, sh the putting the shells in, rolling the dice, was to save in time and effort. If you're taking the engine out anyway. Sometimes the best solutions in life come when you sit on the mistakes that you've made, literally, and we weigh up the pros and the cons. So, con number one, effort. At the very least now, we've come to the conclusion that we're changing the engine. Yes. That is a big job in an MX-5, as we've found out, i.e. you need to take the subframe off and wheel the whole lot out the front, which means the torch hood needs to be disconnected, prop shaft needs to be disconnected, you need to pull out the air conditioning, um, which you need to do responsibly with a man who extracts the gas. As TNT fans are no doubt aware, we've been talking about this for some time now, this unit is just getting a bit too small, so we're relocating. Um, and that's all happening, like now. We've got basically a month this car needs to be out here. The end. Like, it, it would need to be gone and done. Uh, so we need to get an engine delivered, install it, and get it out working within a month. So, the car was just over two grand. The engine's going to be just over another grand. Which takes up to £3,000. We're also going to need to buy clutch, bushes, you know, all sorts of ancillary bits and bobs, belts. Um, you're probably talking about two, three hundred quid for all of that. Uh, clutch more than that, so we're, we're at the four grand mark, so that's quite a lot of money. So we should expand here, good solid project. We've had a look under the car, and it's, apart from the, the subframe being a bit crusty, mm. the rest of it's mint. It's got the LSD, it's got the six speed, the bows. it's got bows, and it's actually got very little rust in the bodywork as well. A couple of instances of car part damage they usually expect for a 14 year old car, but it's pretty mint. If it wasn't for the engine, this would be the steel of the century. Uh, I know and I was a bit too keen evidently to think it was the steel of the century when I bought it. So, we've got three pros and three cons. Somebody needs to go and have a wee sleep in it and think about it in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we've obviously decided what the name for this, the car, despite us being people who don't actually name cars, yes. we've got a name for her. Uh, isn't it Rodney? No. It's Shelley. Yeah. <laughs> Since our shells are away for a wee skite. <laughs> Mary Shelley. Because it's going to be a f***ing nightmare. <laughs> ah. Nice noise there. What rush, it's coming back. Yeah, that's good. Thank, Thank God. Looking a bit more human. <laughs>